my name is Kinda. I work uh, for uh, Greater London uh, Authority, GLA, otherwise known as uh, City Hall. I head the development and digital delivery team at um, GLA, and we look after and deliver the digital services for the Mayor of London and Assembly. Uh, I've worked under two mayors. One of them is the one of them is the, the current Prime Minister, but that's uh, another presentation for another day. Hi, I'm Will Huggins, uh, CEO and co-founder at Zucha, and we are the uh, Drupal development partner um, that uh, has been working with um, GLA on a number of projects, and uh, in particular the one that we want to talk about today, which is Team London. Okay. Um, the GLA is responsible for the strategic administration of um, 610 square metres of Greater London, the primary website of um, the GLA is london.gov.uk. Um, it has so many other um, associated microsites integrated without the site. Um, the site inform and promote um, services of the uh, London Mayor and the uh, London Assembly um, offers uh, the capital. As the work of the Mayor and Assembly evolve, so must our digital services continually engaging users and stakeholders in and beyond London. Team London. Um, is a, a program, a volunteering program that was started by, launched during the Olympics in 2012 to gain more volunteers to participate and help with, um, with, uh, uh, with the Olympics. Um, it has 150,000 adults and 100,000 young, younger um, <coughs> Londoners volunteers. It's one of Mayor of London's um, initiatives, priority initiatives, encouraging more Londoners to give time and help and make the city um, a better place for everyone. So, the challenge. Um, the main challenge was um, Team London had three, different, three separate microsites that are sitting on Drupal 7 um, legacy websites. And the main challenge was to um, reinvent the user experience of those three separate microsites into a single new and improved user experience to help increase the numbers and diversity of the volunteers uh, that participate through the program. How many here are working on Drupal 7 out of interest using it? And how many moved to the 8? Okay, so a lot of them are. So this will tell the story of how we did it on Team London. So we partnered with Zucha and their um, Experience Lab user research um, agency to help us deliver this project user, using um, user-centered design. To start with, we first um, had a full analysis and an audit of the current, uh, current features uh, and functionality that was offered on, um, on uh, the legacy sites, the three legacy sites. And then we looked at what new features that will be coming up in the immediate future. We then, um, working with our user um, research agency Experience Lab, we did collaborative research with representative groups from um, volunteers, admin, and, um, and uh, providers um, to look together on how we can improve the user experience um, of Team London, how to make it easier for providers to publicize and um, uh, publish volunteering opportunities and how to make it easier for volunteers to sign up and perform them. We ran four different workshops um, with representatives of um, the admin um, groups that access the Team London and the providers and the volunteers. And we looked um, at how they interact separately with Team London sites uh, to try and understand what's their motivations, um, for, uh, user needs, and frustrations. One of the exciting stories that we keep telling when we tell the story of this project is like the, the ideas that came out of it. It's so simple, but you don't know it until you start talking to them. Like one of the needs of the volunteers was to, under, uh, to find the location of their next volunteering um, Opportunity. The legacy site only offered which borough the volunteering opportunity is, while they wanted the address. How do I get from A to B to get there um, in time? And then um, the motivations. Um, the younger volunteers wanted to gain skills, um, work skills that they will be able to use looking for jobs, while 
that other volunteers wanted to, unfortunately, to give back um, into the community. The main frustration that came across all the participants was um, um, they were left in limbo, like volunteers who were applying for those opportunities. They didn't have, on the, during um, via the legacy side, information that tell them what should I do on the day, where should I go, simple questions as what should I wear, what should I bring with me. There was no interaction, so we so this was a main a pain point for the volunteers that we wanted to address in the rebuild of um, the site on D8. So we took all the outcomes that came from the user research and then uh, we put it together to map out the user needs and journeys to rebuild it and take this opportunity to rebuild it on Drupal 8. Um, and that helped us put together uh, a minimum viable uh, product that we then worked with Zucha on how do we build um, the solution, the technical solution behind it, um, and how do we integrate it with the main primary site of GLA, which is London.gov.uk. Um, this was our first microsite to be built on Drupal 8, so we didn't have the infrastructure, we didn't have the tools that we needed, so we rely heavily on Zucha's ex experience to set up that infrastructure and the tools to help us move and migrate the data from the D7 legacy sites to the D8 site. Also help understand um, how do we you, uh, how do we uh, enable some of the features that will be used to build other sites and to you reuse them as reusable components to help us deliver sites in the future um, easier. So we prototype the designs for Team London. We had um, test, we tested them with uh, with users, representative of uh, volunteers, admin, and um, providers and uh, to try to get that um, loop of feedback um, from the user testing. So we, we were going into reviewing the designs together, looking at what features and info, as in content, that we should keep, what we should be removing, and what we should be reusing or re-editing and updating. Then, um, throughout the life cycle of the projects, we ran uh, three different um, user testing um, workshops with um, a focus group of 16 key users from volunteers and from um, uh, from uh, providers um, to test and uh, iterate as we go and validate um, the designs uh, sprint by sprint. The information that came from the user testing um, and the films, because we filmed it throughout, were used at show and tell to engage senior stakeholders and get their um, feedback. Um, and then the feedback from the show and tells and the feedback from the user testing was then validated against the MVP that we've set up to build in the first place. And that helped us prioritize sprint by sprint and refine what the next iteration should be and how it should um, impact uh, the build of the product. And then I'm gonna hand it over to Will to take you through that technical doc. Yeah, so for the, the technical solution, there are two considerations. Um, one is to deliver the functionality that was coming out of all of the user research um, and the user needs work. Um, and the other was to lay the foundations for um, uh, upgrading more of the London.gov Drupal 7 estate onto Drupal 8 and really use this as an opportunity to learn um, and put in place the foundations for, um, for that, that future upgrade. Um, it began with taking the existing... Uh, Drupal 7 profiles and estate features and porting those to Drupal 8 for the new microsite to ensure that we had consistency across the, the London.gov estate. We also wanted to make sure that uh, the solution was as maintainable as possible, um, so we really focused on using core and contributed module to deliver a lot of the functionality around content moderation, publishing workflows um, and user interactions. Um, so to get that um, kind of consistency across the whole of the, the London.gov estate. Um, the base theme was built using those GLA estate features that can then be used and rolled out across all future microsites. So again, building a foundation for uh, future uh, scalability um, and ensuring consistency throughout the rollout of the Drupal 8 upgrades. Um, in terms of functionality, we really focused around accessibility. Um, one of the, the key goals was, was reaching um, harder to reach groups um, and make sure that the, the solution was accessible to everybody. 
Um, so um, again, a lot of the front end efforts certainly focused around accessibility um, and also performance. Um, so uh, this is definitely a service that volunteers in particular um, used very heavily on mobile devices, so making sure that it was performant, uh, that everything loaded well and it used the, 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 the minimum amounts of resources to deliver the experience that users really need. Uh, Kinder mentioned earlier, one of the key frustrations that came out um, from the research was um, the previous system had really guided users around searching for opportunities by the borough in which they lived, but um, actually that was kind of irrelevant to a lot of users. They sort of said, well, we don't really care if it's in our borough or the neighbouring borough. We're more interested in where it is, how easy is it for me to get to, how long does it take to get there. Uh, so we really focused on delivering um, a really enhanced search experience, so using Apache Solar, um, to be able to pull in all of the, the location information um, and serve the results not just as a list of, of opportunities but also in a map view where people can literally visually select the, the most appropriate opportunity for them um, and also within the search results provide distance and travel details so really everything they need to know about how to get to the opportunity and how long it will take them to get there um, is, is right there at the search results list page. Um, some custom features that were really important, um, again, one of the things that Kinder mentioned was the, the frustration of uh, volunteers being in limbo. Um, so that's the time lag between saying, yeah, I want to go and volunteer um, on this date, um, and then not hearing anything back. And in that time, maybe they'll make other plans or get a bit disillusioned. So having used the dashboards that both volunteers, but also the administrators and providers of the volunteering opportunities, um, we're able to manage all of their information in a, in a single, easy-to-use screen. And again, focusing on um, uh, the mobile UI was a really important factor in this uh, to ensure that the, the system is usable across all devices um, so that people can um, manage the opportunities they've got and the volunteers that are coming to them. And a key part of that, which we added in as a, as a direct result of the user research, is having SLA notifications. So when a user's action things, um, so for example, if I'm a, a volunteer and I volunteer for a, 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 an opportunity, the administrator will get notified and there'll be SLAs around that. So if they haven't responded within a certain time frame, they'll get a reminder. And it's really just about reducing that lag between uh, someone saying they want to volunteer and then actually getting the confirmation that they're wanted and, and what they need to do. Um, one of the things that we've really enjoyed about working with GLA is that they um, are really passionate about making sure that we're open sourcing uh, all of the work we do so that it's, it's used um, not just by other London boroughs but by any organisation um, that has similar challenges or user needs. So um, a lot of the project code is already made available uh, in GitHub and um, as we develop more functionality um, we, will, we will continue to add you know, fuller um, uh, release information um, for everyone else to, to be benefit from the learnings. Um, Team London was delivered uh, by um, a joint um, team from Zucha and GLA staff that worked together using um, the Agile metho uh, methodology and they were at we were adhering um, to government service uh, manual design. Um, as a result, we we undergone two um, local government digital service assessment, and we passed both of them with flying um, marks. So um, the first assessment was after the discovery, and it was about the discovery and the user research work that was uh, delivered via the product. And then the second one was after the launch of the beta site, and they are um, blogs about them on London.gov if you want to read more. Okay. Yeah. And it's just a photo to prove that we actually did all work together nicely. Um, so in terms of the, the outcomes, um, it's uh, been um, not just a pleasing project to work on from the perspective of um, the, the user engagement factor, but also um, it's, it's actually worked. Um, so since launch uh, in July, um, visits have increased by 14.4%, but most importantly for us, uh, really, it's the engagement um, on the site. So engagement, which is kind of measured as dwell time simplistically for this statistic, um, is up over 34% uh, and bounce rates down by, um, by over 23%. Um, so we get much better engagement of users on the site. Um, and that's manifesting itself in, in actual 
Um, searches for opportunities, so in, in the five months since, um, since launch, we've had almost 400,000 unique searches, um, which has resulted in over 10,000 um, registrations um, for volunteers to actually register, and also for providers to register their opportunities for volunteers, um, which um, uh, is a 6.7% uh, conversion rate, which has exceeded uh, the expectations that we had um, initially uh, set for the project. So, uh, in summary, um, the, the project really has followed the model of starting with the users, really understanding exactly what the users need, um, and building a service that's, that's based around those human uh, needs, motivations, and frustrations, um, using agile, uh, iterative model, um, and working as a, as a single agile team with shared purpose, and, uh, and coding in the open, and making everything that we do available for everybody else to use, and hopefully they will. Any questions? Yes. Okay, is it multilingual at all? Um, based on you know, different needs or people you might want to engage? No, it's English, um, it, but it's something we're looking into for our digital services at the Greater London Authority. Currently, all of our um, digital services are in English only. Oh, and sorry, yeah. um, is there a link to the GitHub? Uh, there isn't, but um, would you be happy for it to be yeah, published I'll, on that or yes. be circulated? We'll so. circulate it, we'll make sure it's published so you can have a look at it. Okay. Thank you. yeah. You're welcome. Uh, what was the reason for it not being multilingual from the beginning? Um, I think it's because um, of the work that we do um, uh, and the resources that we have in the team, all our digital services currently, it's only provided in uh, English only. But like I said, part of the move to D8 is to improve the work that we do, and that's one of the aspects that we're looking into, how to do it. Yes? Um, it is true but part of your, I mean, I guess, your strategy to using all the digital presences of the GLA, I mean, a token and an intranet, with maybe it's different set of requirements, that's what uh, you use, Drupal, for all the web presences that you might have? Mostly Drupal. Yeah. Uh, most of our work, it depends on the project requirement. So, um, like I said, um, the primary site um, for the GLA is london.gov.uk, but we have a vast number of microsites. And it depends on the user engagement and the requirement of the product. So, the technology currently is um, mainly Drupal, a little bit of Java. We have um, yeah, it's Drupal and Java so far. Not consider any other content management systems, for instance, or do you have any other legacy systems that uh, have been migrated into Drupal? Or? The current London.gov originally was in Drupal and it was built into 7, and now the aim is to move it into D8, but we don't have anything that is not Drupal or not Java. No, we don't, like WordPress, for example, we don't have any product using different CMS, no. Welcome. There could be, but not run by the GLA, because we have um, so there we have two different type of projects. So we have projects that we build for the GLA um, to um, ref to um, allow engagements over our policies that we work on, and then there are projects that we partner with other partners, GLA partners, um, like um, NHS, um, Metropolitan Police. Um, education offset and then if we are partnering with them then we use their platform so there might be other um, platforms that we are partnered with where they have our brands because we work together on that are not non drupal but not the GLA digital estate no okay. yeah any other question just one one thing that actually that I thought about which goes um, to answer the, the question about multilingual one of the, the issues that we've found on other projects where there's a heavy uh, amount of the content is user generated, and this is a perfect example, you know, all of the content really is generated by charities um, and uh, organizations that are seeking volunteers. Um, to make it truly multilingual, we would have to try to encourage everybody to post every opportunity in the, the various languages that we would choose to, to publish in, which again adds another layer of complexity um, to, to the process of planning how we can to do that. So it's definitely something that's worth noting because London, more than probably any other city in the UK, is uh, you know a multicultural environment. So it's uh, 
I think one to consider, I think. Thank you. Thank you.